Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to work on this pry bar so it looks like a giant screwdriver. It doesn't seem to have any maker's mark on it. Not that I could tell at this juncture. But the handle is split and it's in general disrepair. So we're going to spend a little time sanding and grinding, overall cleaning this up. But the first thing I want to do is try to get this handle sorted out. You can probably see the daylight in between there. So what I'm going to use for that is some of the Bob Smith Industries, the two-part epoxy. This five-minute quick time, it's a little cold today. I've got 15 minute, but we'll try the five minute, and that's the five minute working time. And then we'll clamp this sucker down and see if we can't get it to become one again. And then we'll proceed with cleaning the rest of this up. So let me get a little time lapse of that going on. And we're going to mix up. I got a couple pieces of tape on this block of wood. And we'll mix up our epoxy here and get this together. So let me start that. So we have it clamped up. This is called a, a cant twist, and this is a unique clamp, but I mean not unique, it's an interesting style, because when you apply the, the radial twist of motion onto a regular screw type clamp, it tends to walk over, so this would, the natural inclination for this would be to, for it to sort of waft over. But with this, because you're pushing here, and, the, and then it's translating that that linear motion into the, you know, this clamping force, it doesn't have any propensity to want to kick one way or the other. So it's very handy for when you're trying to align stuff. And I have several of these. They're very expensive. This one I picked up at flea market for like $3, which is probably one of my best deals ever. So that's, that's interesting if you haven't seen that before. And then this tape, I, I think I mentioned it before. I learned it from 357 Magdad. He learned it from someone else. <laughs> I can't remember who it is. But you use tape, you know, on the typical workbench, and usually I use the, the painter's tape, but this isn't cooperating today for whatever reason. Uh, but you just put some tape down on the workbench, and then that gives you a nice place to, to mix up epoxies and things like that, and then you just tear it off when you're done. I just use this Christie's tape, um, which I'm very happy with. I guess this is pipe wrap tape, but it's it's very, like, thick electrical tape. I just found every use in the world for it. I think this is 7 or or $8, something like that. I'll put a screenshot of it up, but this is just one of my favorite things now. I'm not a duct tape guy, and it doesn't leave much of a residual. It's not gaffer tape, but, you know, just super handy stuff. So we'll go ahead and let this dry, and then we will work on getting this thing sorted out. Here we are. We're finished with this. This is the, the this was really a chore to clean up. I tried and tried and tried to get that as clear as I could, and I kept going back and forth and sander, fiber wheel, the die grinders, a bunch of different grits and everything. Finally, it took. It's still not perfect, but it took some 400 grit and then to the buffer, and I skipped the buffer part because I sort of was in between a couple different projects at the time, but. But I guess the, the only thing that is really interesting about this is that, well, that's different, is that I use this copper kettle, it's a metallic wax, and I've used it once before. I had two colors, green and, and of course this copper color, and this has held up pretty well. I, I use this quite frequently, and it's stayed on there pretty nicely. I'll see if I can't find a, where I bought that from and put a picture of it up. 
But I'm pretty confident that that'll be a good handle on here. This handle cleaned up okay, but I wasn't real happy with the way that, that it looked, and I wasn't sure if staining it would be good enough. And it gave me a chance to try something slightly different, but all in all, this cleaned up pretty well. And this is going to be a tool that I use, so I'm not worried about it having a mirror finish. It's, I know that sounds like a rationalization, but but I don't want to put a million hours into something I'm just going to hammer on and pry with, so. But I'd like to thank everybody for watching and subscribing, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks, have a good day.